Hello everybody, welcome to the first round matchup between Wolf Bainsons and Adant. Uh, Wolf Bainsons with the Wood Elves won the coin toss and chose to kick. Adant with the Dwarves um, is receiving. Adant has an 80% win rate in Champs Ladder with Dwarves. And Wolf Bainsons has a 79% win rate in Champs Ladder with Wood Elves. So they, they seem quite evenly matched. Um, Wolf Bainsons qualified by getting the top four in Champs Ladder Season 15. Adant won the Twitch Blood Bowl League qualifier. And I, I, I kind of like um, a danced team here with three guard. I like the skill picks of three guard. Um, <laughs> so he's gone three guard and then blocked to, to shore up the wood, the wood Elf matchup a bit, which is fair enough because Wood Elves are terrifying. And uh, I'm, but I'm, I'm not sure about the racial pick of of uh, of dwarves, and he doesn't have he doesn't have the apple. He's gone for an extra troll slayer rather than an apple. So, um, yeah, and he's only got one runner, which is a bit risky. But you know, skills wise, it's all right, I guess. And uh, Wolf Bainsons has probably gone what I should have gone for. Um, he's gone two re rolls plus leader, tackle strip. And then his fourth skill, he's gone wrestle on the lineman, and I, I kind of regret not taking wrestle on the lineman. I went block on a catcher, and I think wrestle on the lineman would have been much better. But, you know, you live and learn. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why Wolf Bane sons Wolf Bane sons instead of Wolf Bane son. But there you go. There you go. So interesting. A dance already kind of split is team in half a little bit here. He should be trying to get back into one mass, I think. For the for the benefit of my uh, of my Twitch viewers, I am. This is the first I am recording this now for YouTube live, though it is a replay. Because <laughs> I've just worked out, I was really struggling to to record the replays and then upload them to YouTube, and now I've worked out how to do it. And I was doing it in a kind of cockeyed way before, but now I've worked it all out, so yeah, that's good for that. So yes, I am streaming the replay live, T-Swizzle. And uh, no, you shouldn't. You shouldn't spam stupid things going on the because I'll just disable them if you spam them. Um, they were absolutely rock hard today. <laughs> a, a rock so hard or two is cock. okay. I don't like this from from uh, Adan. He has split. He split his own team. The Wood Elves haven't even had to split his team. I wouldn't have hated... Um, I wouldn't have hated the... Wood Elves going more aggressive here because he has just he has just purposefully split his team in half, which is what you want as a as a Wood Elf team. So bit of a bit a little bit of a dodgy reroll there, wasn't it? Um, you know, turn two you don't really want to use a reroll, but it it would have stopped stopped a catcher getting knocked over and the other catcher getting knocked over seventy five percent of the time. But um. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> um, so yeah, so he's got a kind of a clear place to stand here, hasn't he? So that you know, this is the thing. If if I had been the Wood Elves, I would have liked to have cut him off more. And he's been allowed to kind of link up and make the tree a bit less relevant. But it should be able to get in the back. But still, I, I would have liked to have split the team more if I'd been there. If I'd been the Wood Elves there. Get fucked, you little cunt! Ha 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 ha! Fuck off! <laughs> oh dear. Yes, that is quite a good news sound, isn't it? Please, guys, please don't. I'm, I don't have to disable them, you know. Don't, don't, um, don't keep doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I do very much appreciate organizers. Thank you very much. But yeah, I do. You know, it is for YouTube, so I'd rather, I'd rather the sound effects weren't spammed so much. You can, the chat is fine. You can spam nonsense in chat because the chat isn't on the YouTube video. It's just like you know, spamming, um, spamming the sound effects would be a bit crap. Yeah, you can't get away from it, can you? Forever. You can't get away from it forever. This, although this was like a 2D block, 1D block, although this is a one dice block, um, I don't like getting punched in return, I think that's not worth it. And uh, yeah, I, I, like the, I like the tree getting the two people here. He hasn't got a lot of options of Dante, these, these guys are still quite stranded on the wrong side of the pitch. Um, He's kind of forced into the troll slayer box, isn't he? And obviously he's got to punch the he's got to punch the air uh, board on that. I mean the dancer the dancer kept these two guys on the wrong side of the pitch there. But I don't know. Interesting call whether to stand firm or not. If he hadn't stand firm, it would have been a frenzy trap if he'd failed. If he'd failed Dauntless. But then, of course, if he'd got another push, he would have been tying up everybody, which would have been amazing. Yeah, it is. It is. I think it's pretty strange that the Wood Elves wouldn't have punched these dwarves on the other side because I would have, I would have jammed them in and, and kept him. Or, or I, at least I would have attempted to split the team, and he he didn't. He just fought them a bit, and you know, it, it's actually five versus four. Is actually. Outmanned in that spot, so a dant, a dant made a GFI there. I was reading chat and it, it distracted me. A dant made a GFI with this guy. If he, if he had been here making a Y cage, there could have only been an uphill block available. But because he made that GFI, that actually let him in for the 75% uh, dodge for a one dicer, and uh, a little bit unlucky to have to use his reroll on the on the dodge away there. I like that block to get this catcher a dodge away, but then he doesn't do it because he goes for the pickup. I think I would have dodged him away with a uh, dodge first, maybe. So now he's finally moved away from this, you know, now it's three versus four over here, so he's finally got a bit more even numbers over there. But yeah, I think that was I think that was definitely a mistake by Adan making that GFI. I think the, the Y cage would be much better, only giving an uphill. Does, it lets not to try to surf the dancer, which is, which is a good call, really, isn't it? He could have surfed him, but then he would have really lost all control of the ball whatsoever. So it was definitely the right call to not, not go for the surf. I'm not, I'm not saying that a dance is shy to blood ball. I do think that was a bit of a mistake, and I'm sure he thought it was a bit of a mistake um, when he did it afterwards. But you know, it's not to say he's bad. There's a lot of pressure, isn't there? Huge KO there. Huge KO. I'm also not sure whether he needed to make that GFI. But um, certainly. Certainly not bad when he's got three rerolls left. Uh, but still, that. Uh, I guess he thought it was kind of easy for somebody to get an assist there. And I mean, it is really hard to get an assist on the ball here. And also, if the ball, if he gets knocked over, likely to be a better scatter than if he was where he was. Oh, thanks very much, Zach McCracken, that's brilliant. So yeah, like you know, I, I I think even now maybe he should have dodged around to get a two, make this a two dice, but then he wants that as the recovery, doesn't he? So he leaps for the one dice and gets a skull. Um, but yeah, you know, he didn't really want to run this guy around because not only would it be a three plus two plus, he would also have no recovery whatsoever, which is why I thought it was kind of safe to leave the the runner where he was. <laughs> 
Don't look at this, please don't be mean. <laughs> it feels amazing, Cornhole Savant. <laughs> Yeah, I do. I do like um, I do like guard on blitzers rather than long beards. Um, but he put them on long beards by the looks of it, didn't he? Interesting. Interesting that he didn't put the guard on the blitzers. Oh, I, I, I take that back about liking <laughs> liking <laughs> liking the team build. Then <laughs> I really don't like guard on on long beards. I would much prefer them on the blitzers to be mobile. But then, you know, maybe he wants to do stuff with the blitzers and just keep the uh, long beards for punching, but long beard. Now this is a huge chance to sack with Wrestle here, isn't there? Just some two pluses, three two pluses and he can sack the ball. For some reason he doesn't go for the sack with Wrestle. And he also makes a three plus dodge instead of a two plus dodge. I don't really know why he did that. Maybe Wolf Bainsons was feeling the pressure, but obviously strip ball wasn't a factor because the Runner's got show sure hands, but I would have, I would have thought, you know, that's what you've got the wrestle there for when someone's got blocking show sure hands, and uh, yeah, that wasn't. That, I think that was, you know, maybe he was a bit, you know, pressure got to him or whatever. That was, um, that was just he could have made a two plus two plus dodge, or he could have made, yeah, three plus leap, and he just did. He did nothing. Whatever you, you, there's no argument that he did the right thing there, <laughs> because either he should have left or he should have gone two plus two plus dodges. Now obviously, the two plus two plus dodge is more is more likely, but if he wanted the movement um, afterwards, then he should have left. Um, maybe he misclicked or it was cyanide auto pathing, but whatever it was, it was a bit of a mistake. I think this was a bit of a mistake from Adan making a kind of a relevant block there. Um, Although you know, although he's unlucky to get a double skulls and use his reroll, it kind of didn't do anything really making that block. And it was the same the turn before. Um, he's kind of yeah, this is funny because watching this live, everyone's like, he's got to score here, hasn't he? He's got to just blitz and score. Um, and he gets the both down. He got the both down last turn, but again, I should I should not look at chat. Um, because the same thing happened last turn, he made a kind of a relevant block over here and then his reroll was gone and then that's when he brought down the Dancer which gave the the sack option, but then it wasn't that bad actually was it? He rolled that both down and then suddenly everybody realised actually that isn't so bad he's got to roll a 3 plus 2 plus to make it 2 dice, which he does and uh, he managed to get that cancelled, but he gets the POW probably pushes the right square Apart from it bounces into the hands of the uh, blitzer who catches it, <laughs> unbelievable. So that is that was pretty unlucky uh, for Wolf Bainsons and very, very lucky for a dant that his blitzer caught it. And it's a, it's a pretty easy two dice to score. You don't want to do anything tricky. Um, maybe maybe. Wolf Bainson should have moved his dancer up. It might have been worth getting his dancer surf to uh, maybe stop the score. But he does make a three dicer, which, which is fair enough, you know. I think a three dicer, you know, it's only one in two hundred and sixteen that you you feel bad about doing it. But um, how do I get rid of the weather here? Right. So you know, maybe that was worth it, and then only double skulls would stop the score. Now. Yeah, that is that is that is that we've got a lot of hits on the board in, in the end. Uh, Wolf Bainsons, only one out of five coming back. So the uh, one turn looking unlikely, but um, you know he's going to need at least two of these back. I think if he only gets one back, not only is he horribly unlucky making two out of nine KO rolls. If he's got eight to start, he's really in a hard in a hard spot, isn't he? If he's got nine, I think nine nine's enough. So 
So Dan nearly went for the back line, but then he's changed his mind. It's a hard one turn with seven players. Oh, that's a very, that's a very good idea. Cornhole Zavand in the chat saying they should have a stat for hits on the ball here in the dice log. They could, couldn't they, on the block, on the block dice screen, they could have a goal or something if they were against the guy with the ball. That'd be interesting. Um, so yeah, he's gone the whole method and then block him and then block him. So it's quite easy to get the pushes, but the uh, tree rooted and did not get to make the blitz. So. Um, Failure to launch on the one turn gets back to nine players, so he's got a bit of a shot. I think if he'd only had seven or eight, he would have been really struggling, but with nine, he should be able to, you know, score at least. <laughs> now, the issue is whether a Dan can force him to score early to give him a chance to, uh, to equalize or whether he can shut him out. But um, I think it would have been really really tough if he'd had less than nine. This is another thing as well about going guard on blitzers. He's actually protecting this guard guy with a blitzer. And blitzers are quite good, aren't they? I'd rather be protecting a blitzer than a, than a long dude. And only movement four guard instead of movement five and agility two instead of agility three, I think. I think the blitzers were the players to put guard on for sure. I'm very surprised that Adan didn't put guard on, on the blitzers. Obviously, he had he had his reasons. I, I just I just don't know what they I don't know what they were. Um, but it doesn't mean he's wrong and I'm right. Of course, I have to keep stressing that, seeing as uh, people think some strange things. I would, I would have rather had two runners than two slayers, personally, just because I think if, if you know, if you, if a runner gets KO'd or, or anything, you pretty much just lost, haven't you? I don't think you really need two slayers. <laughs> oh dear, Chad, good old Chad. Yeah, I, I don't like I don't like troll slayers very much. I think one's okay, but against the bash teams, they can frenzy trap him a bit. And against the agility teams, you're giving up tackle and you're giving them a way to outbash you as well. Which I'm not such a fan of. But then with two, you do get to cover both sides. I think maybe two Troll Slayers are better against lighter teams because it does give you more movement than a, than a lineman, uh, a long beard. So it gives you a bit more movement. And, you know, against, against a bad player, you've got double the frenzy, which is good for getting surfs. But against a good player, the frenzy can get you into trouble with frenzy traps and also you know it's st they, they still threaten the sidelines but they're unlikely to get surfs because of it against a good against a good coach and obviously in the world cup there should only be good coaches so He's kind of going the L stall route here, isn't he? Um, Wolf Bainsons, which I don't, I don't like so much with a with a kind of unskilled team. You know, I think at higher TV, when you've got some kind of you know agility five blodge throw or something, and other people, then then the uh, the elf stall's a lot better. But in this, I don't know. I just don't like it so much. <laughs> if you're all if you're all like a long pass, it's pretty pretty scary, isn't it? I would have rather just picked up with a dancer and, and kept it with him. I 
Yeah, of course. I mean, you can, you can, you still can surf against good players, but it's just it's just a lot worse. I think uh, frenzy is a lot worse against good players. Like it's it's frenzy is the absolute number one noob crushing skill. You know, um, and it's still got its uses. Like I still like it against good coaches. You know, it's still it's still pitch control makes the makes the uh, pitch like you know one square narrower, but. Strength three frenzy is is a double edged sword, isn't it? So he has threatened the ball a little bit. He has got. I think you've got to make a, a bit of a threat to the ball when somebody's self stalling like this. He hasn't. He's only made. He's only made a token gesture to threaten the ball, and he's going straight for him. I think I would have maybe blitzed with this guy first, so then you wouldn't have had to risk the two plus to punch. But yeah, ah, it's because he wanted more there. See, there's pros and cons to everything. So I would never. I would never say. Anybody's wrong for doing something really. It's just there are always pros and cons out there. Well very rarely. Like when he did that, his three plus two plus dodges was just wrong. Now whether that was nerves or you know the default pathing or running out of time. Um there's very few things that are just objectively wrong in Blood Bowl, isn't there? Most most decisions have pros and cons and you know, is what it is. I'm just offering my thoughts. I'm not saying, I'm not saying I'm right and wrong. <laughs> Can't stress that enough. <laughs> you know, I don't. I, it's unlikely that anybody's on the top of the game in, in the World Cup. You know, there, there's a lot of pressure, isn't there? And different people are going to feel it different, different amounts. And you know, people could just be careless as well. Like in Champ Slider, I'm very careless when uh, I'm just reading chat and everything and having really quick turns. So, it could just be careless. Yeah, that's the thing, uh, that's a good point by uh, Try and chat, is that by not having guard on his blitzes, he does get to kind of use them to run around a bit, but... I think maybe he should have pulled back that turn because it was... Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? It's really, it's really actually quite hard. Put, putting non-tacklers on war dance is a bit of a waste of time because they are getting away 35 times out of 36. So I didn't really do a whole lot basing up the war dancers there. Um, you want you want the dodge guys based by tackle, and you want your non-tacklers basing the linemen. Really. He did have tackle on that card, and it did its job. He's got to desperately get back on the right side of the ball now, hasn't he? Um, so he probably wants to blitz this wrestle guy or this dancer to kind of try to get back in front. And you know, basing everybody at this point, herp dirt base base basing, isn't so bad. He's just got to make sure he doesn't get out and you, which is the biggest thing. It's, it's really hard. I mean, it's really hard when all of your guys are movement four. Well, most of you guys are movement four. And most of your opponents of, well, half are eight and half are seven. In fact, probably most are on movement eight now, aren't they? He's got two catches, uh, two dancers and three catches. So most of the team is movement eight on the Wood Elf side. So went for the dancer. Obviously, the dancer is higher value than the uh, lineman, so it's tempting to go. I think maybe it's positionally it may have been better to blitz the wrestle guy, but um, it's certainly not wrong to go for the dancer, is it? And yeah, 
this is this is easy now with that that failed dodge the tree gets relevant he gets to he gets to make a solid kind of cage around here with half of the six seven dwarves out of the play completely which is pretty good pretty good getting getting the entirety of the dwarf team out of the way he has got to give up that potential surf hasn't he because he doesn't want to to, to kind of like cage can't really spare anyone to protect him getting so seven. seven dwarves yeah seven dwarves three here three here and one there that's seven dwarves basically completely out of position <laughs> pretty bad snow white's there trying to do something I can see the point of not dodging him because, you know, 3 plus 2 plus without dodge is, is scary. And there's the potential of him to tie up two players this turn if they don't knock him over, which they don't. So that was that was a good non-dodge, I thought, from the from the catcher. Some people might have gone for the dodge there, wouldn't they? Two guard, kind of out of the way. Excuse me. And yeah, you know, it's, it's actually really hard for him to do anything. I mean, maybe you could have blitzed this guy to get near the ball, but he, he's gone for the surf, hasn't he? And he does get people in, but again, all, already all of his guys are on the wrong side of the ball. Either on the wrong side of the pitch or on the wrong side of the ball. And so, I think at this point, the dance probably given up stopping the score at all now, and he's just playing for the you know, trying to get some attrition for overtime. I think that's fair. But he does get this is a this is this is a a pretty pretty sure this is a mistake. Because if this is a one dice block, if he had pushed him to there, it would have been a two dice blitz. It would have been two zappers if he's pushed them there, wouldn't it? A two dice uh, surf. So I think that was an absolute mistake that he didn't make it a two dice surf. Uh, maybe he was, you know, maybe he misclicked. Maybe he was thinking of something else that I didn't think of. But um, that seems pretty obviously to have been should have been a two dice surf, shouldn't it? Maybe he was thinking if you're all both down on both dice, he didn't want him being in the way or something. But you wouldn't want him to be here either, would you? So. And it'd be much more likely with one dice, so yeah, I think that was a bit of a bit of a mistake there. Important role there, wasn't it, to get him out? Yeah, maybe maybe you just forgot about the cancer assist. You know, it's it's easy it's easy to make minor mistakes like that. It, it certainly doesn't mean he's, <laughs> you know, anyone can be kind of. It's a lot easier when you're watching the match as well than when you're playing. I, I mean, I say this every time. He does he does have to give up the uh, dancer surf though, doesn't he? That by going for that surf, he does trade surfs by getting that surf. Um, there was an option to just blitz with the. Uh, Dancer. If he had if he had pushed there, he could have blitzed with a dancer and then run around here. But he would have made a dodge from the throw, but it would have stopped his dance his own dancer getting counter surfed. And uh, KO. Oh no, it wasn't. It was nothing on the dancer. Still. This is an interesting dodge because I can see why he's done the move. And re-rolled it. Because, you know, you've got to think here, if you lose the toss against Budels, you've just lost. So you want to do what you can to, um, you know, to not get it to to overtime. Because you are looking 50-50 blocks. If, if, if Woodells win the toss, they're almost certainly going to score. So I can see why he'd use a re-roll there, but I would have... I would have maybe not gone for the dodge because I wouldn't want to have to use the re-roll. If, if, he, if he fails that dodge... And the runner's armor gets like you know the run the runner gets KO'd or whatever. He's just he's almost certainly going to lose, isn't he? So he kind of had to reroll it once he decided to do it. Um, 
Yeah, I guess it's, it's worth a slim chance of stopping the score, really. Probably. But he has got a two-turn chance. So, you know, it worked out. He got a bit of pressure on. And he has got a two-turn chance. But the problem is, of course, Dwarves trying to score in two turns is... Um, crap. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, it was pretty low impact over real gun. Yeah, yeah, that's true, Tribe. But, you know, that's the thing. If you think you're just definitely going to lose half the time if you don't try it, I can see why he did it. And, um, you know, he's still got two rerolls for overtime, but I don't know. I think out of, I think once up, once you commit to the dodge, you've almost got to reroll it because he's only got one runner, you know? Uh, with this kick, I would have been tempted to bring back a run, uh, blitzer, um, just in case, or even a long beard for less chance of catching it. Hope for a touchback because I think with that kind of kick, you just ain't scoring. You know? <laughs> if, unless it's a touchback, you, you're just not going to score. So um, I would have thought about bringing back a different player there rather than the one guy he had. But then again, uh, you know it's. It's really easy when you're just sitting watching a game, so I'm, I'm not. I'm really not criticising all these guys. It's just you know, I'm just looking at the game and saying what I see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he can't even get the Slayer into the scoring position, so he's only going to be able to get two guys in scoring positions. It's really rough, isn't it? Again, again, that's kind of his fault because he only had one runner. If he had two runners, he could have had at least one runner. You know, he could have maybe screened off a runner down the side there. And, you know, but he's just got two receiving threats. Is all he is all he's managed. Gets the pick up. Obviously, he's not going to try any GFIs because he doesn't want to use his last rerolls before overtime. I think you could have just let t let the time run out. But I think if you moved a blitzer back there, then you could pick it up and hand it off to the runner and the runner could have got forward. But then that's a crap idea. Right. <laughs> so yeah, he blitzes the blitzer there with Wrestle this time. And there's only one dwarf left who can possibly score. So he's just going to make some two pluses to try and make it harder for him. doing its job so you can blitz one guy off and then it's going to be a 5 plus pass 4 plus catch and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 oh he can't, he can't GFI he can't go back so it would be a 4 plus 3 plus dodge 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 oh no he can't even do that Oh, he's got a blitz. He can blitz the dancer. Oh yeah, okay, that's much better than blitzing him. Less li less likely to work because it's only a one dicer against block, rather than a two dicer against non block. But really, if he didn't take out the dancer, he just couldn't have scored. So this way, it's a three plus three plus dodges. So absolutely the right play there from a from a, a dant. Kind of lower odds, but the, he just wasn't going to be able to make like four plus four plus three plus dodges and stuff. So I actually quite like going for that one dice block to get the push. Obviously very lucky getting the KO from it. It wasn't a 4 plus 3 plus, said the coach. He didn't have the movement. It would be a 4 plus 4 plus 3 plus dodges. So I actually quite like that in the end. I, I was surprised by it at the time, but now, now I like it. <laughs> so Wolf Bainsons wins the toss and... All of a sudden, it's looking pretty grim for the dwarves. Yeah, and the war dancer stays out. That is absolutely huge that he stays out. That one dicer turning into an amazing decision now. But still, with 10 players in overtime, you really wouldn't expect Wood Elves, wood elves against dwarves, to, the, the Wood Elves to have 10 players going into overtime, would you? That is, um, that is very surprising. 
Obviously, a Dan likes the Slayers. He's taken off a long beard here. So rain, that actually, I think the rain definitely helps the dwarves. Um, <laughs> so the rain helps the, uh, helps the, helps the dwarves here, I think, because, um, it kind of, like, although the wood elves can score whenever they want, um, you know, they do that by making a handoff or, or a pass, and, um, and yeah, it's, it's tricky. It's, it, it becomes really tricky when that's on a 3+, plus instead of a, instead of a 2+, plus, isn't it? And obviously if they're marked, it's a 4+, plus. they still got a catch. So, you, you, you know, Wolf Bainson's hasn't given, like, what I like about Woody's in this situation is they've got options. And basically, Wolf Bainston's taken away his options by putting these four catches here. He's basically committed to the pass play. Doesn't use his reroll picking up because he's only got one. I would have definitely screened, screened that off a bit. And maybe he's just had two scoring threats up. But um, he really committed to the pass play there, didn't he? Four threats. Four narrow at midfield. And then only two with the ball. So, um... You know, I think definitely pressuring the ball, it's high risk for the dwarves. But then, you know, what else can they do? You know, they they can't really stop the stop the elves very well. So this seems a great a great chance to uh, swarm the ball, and he could have considered bouncing it there, but I guess uh, scattering it. But I guess if it goes further away, that's really bad, isn't it? At the moment, it's only one GFI to pick it up. And the extra movement of the Troll Slayer coming in handy here as he makes two GFIs. Very good. And the runner. Five plus with a reroll to pick it up. <laughs> what a scatter. <laughs> that is... That is... Uh, yeah, that's, that's, I mean, that's four versus two. But, you know, unfortunately for dwarves... It's just some two pluses for the elves. He should have made that block first, shouldn't he? When it was three dice, that was a. I think that was a misplay. I guess. I guess it technically wasn't because by he could have used a team reroll to dodge here, but I, I think he he probably should have made the three dice block before making that dodge. Gets a wrestle hit on the ball. And perfect scatter, god scatter, wasn't it? I mean, three of them were good, but, um, you know, four were actually good scatters. And he didn't base up this dancer. Fails the intercept. Catcher's got it. Unbelievable. That's what else, isn't it? <laughs> That's what else for you. And, uh... <laughs> you know, it's, it's just stupid, isn't it? Opponent gets the ball, surrounded by his own players. Wood Elves roll some two pluses, two dice block, some more two pluses, a three plus, and they've, they've won. So, they're a super strong choice for this format, Wood Elves. You know, they won't, and in that game, much like my game, tackle did nothing, strip ball did nothing. Um, so, you know, they're just they're just... They're just unbelievable, aren't they? 16 AV breaks is a lot of AV breaks. You know, in, I don't know percentage-wise whether it's over the top, but he just didn't make any cars, did he? You'd have liked to, uh, you'd have liked to at least made one cars from 16 AV breaks. So I guess you know, I think I think they both uh, they both played well, and they you know they both made a a few maybe maybe mistakes or whatever but you know I'm, I'm again i'm not i'm not criticizing from making the mistakes just just saying what i think you know <laughs> and you know it, it is definitely tough i know how tough it is so well played to both of them and congrats to wolf bainson's 
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.